We're halfway through the season and we're top of the Bundesliga. We've got a new French wonder kid between the sticks and today we're about to kick off the Champions League knockout stages. But as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe and let's get into today's episode. And as always, we are starting out with your comments. Will you be selling these top performing wonder kids like Leipzig does in real life? There are many examples, including Zabotsly and Christopher and Kunku. So the simple answer is yes, you are absolutely right. With the amount of wonder kids that RB Leipzig have had in the past and have sold in real life, it certainly wouldn't be realistic if I didn't try to reflect that in this career mode. Now, to be fair, you might argue after Bayern Munich came in with a £38 million offer triggering the release clause of this man, Benjamin Sesko, I did decide to offer him a new contract which did put an end to that transfer saga for now. However, with us only being half of the way through the season, realistically, I don't think it's quite right yet for this young man to move away from RB Leipzig. However, whilst we have secured his future at least until the end of the season, I'm sure come the summer transfer window, there will be lots of other big teams sniffing around for his signature. And of course, if we can get a decent amount of money for him, I will not stand in his way. Now, to be fair, it's not just him. There is this 23-year-old young man, Lewis Appender, whom I'm also quite concerned with. With him scoring nine goals and 15 Bundesliga appearances, I'm sure there's going to be some top teams across Europe sniffing for his signature too. And with the likes of El Gif, El Mas performing really well across all competitions with nine goals and six assists and of course the main man my creative hub Danny Olmo arguably the best player on the entire team I've got to be honest I am a little bit nervous about what sort of action will happen come the summer and whether or not I am even going to be able to hold on to some of my star players. Maybe a decent option for a backup cam will be Danny DeVitt from AZ. He isn't a future first team player, but will do the job in rotation. I would also recommend Maximilian Bayer from Hoffenheimer as a backup striker. Really fast, which could be a game changer as he could be a future first team player. Love the content, keep it up. Well, firstly, thank you very much. I do very much appreciate it. And you can be certain that I definitely do need a new central attacking midfielder with PSG determining that it wasn't enough game time for this man Javi Simmons so they've decided to recall him in the January transfer window. Now I'm not really sure where they got that idea from because I thought he was playing quite a few games however it has left me a little bit short in a position that I do play two players and it only leaves me with three now to fight over those two positions and with me only at the moment having nine million pounds to spend it looks likely I'm going to have to wait at least until the summer if I want to bolster that area of the pitch. Now to be fair as I haven't yet scouted him I don't know too much about this man Danny DeVitt however with him being six foot all 25 years of age entering his peak and seemingly according to the uh, the green stars at the moment having some fairly favorable stats right across the board maybe he could be an option come the summer. And as for this man, Maximilian Bayer, of course he is German and he does have experience playing in the Bundesliga. However, with him now moving to Spurs on this career mode, realistically, would he want to make the switch back to the Bundesliga to play for RB Leipzig? Let's see how he gets on in a Spurs shirt before making that decision. And finally, you should now go for Jared Branthwaite as he can be a great replacement to your captain and he can also play with Simakan or Lukeba. Yes, so Jared Branthwaite being six foot five and just 21 years of age is a pretty decent shout. Out. And of course, if you did see my Everton career mode, you will know that he did develop into a pretty decent centre-back. Now, at the beginning of this series, I was kind of pinning my hopes on this man, Willie Auburn, my captain and my leader of men, being a crucial figure in the dressing room for me. And with him being 83 rated, he is still my strongest defender. However, with him being 31 years of age and clearly having horrendous physical stats when it comes to acceleration, agility and sprint speed, which completely goes against the kind of attributes that I need for a Gagan pressing style to be effective. Added to the fact he has done a couple of daft things so far this season, including giving away a soft penalty against Borussia Dortmund that cost us three points. However, as opposed to that, this man Mohamed Simakan has been in absolutely sensational form so far this season, already up to 81, and with him just being 23 years of age, I think he is going to be a key and influential figure in my defence as the career mode progresses, as well as his French counterpart, the 21-year-old Castello Lukeba, who is showing great potential, already up by 2 to 80. I genuinely believe that these two young Frenchmen are going to be a pivotal foundation to my defence for the foreseeable future. However, with me potentially wanting to make some improvements to the likes of Lucas Klosterman and maybe my captain Willie Auburn come the summer, maybe Jared Branthwaite or even some of these other centre-backs that I've shortlisted could well be the answer. Speaking about trying to get the best out of some of these players, though, I can look no further than this man, Nicholas Sievald. It was brought to my attention last episode that I wasn't giving him the amount of game time that perhaps he deserves, and with him having the potential to grow and develop into a pretty decent talent with him just being 22 years of age, I decided to listen to your advice, and it proved absolutely perfect with him scoring a wonder goal in the last episode, now pushing his rating up to 77. And with him being absolutely delighted with the amount of game time that he's getting, I'm hopeful he 
he can keep it up and with me putting him on a more tailored training and development plan that he can hopefully improve that rating even further as the career mode progresses and who knows maybe he will find himself in the starting 11 for the foreseeable future to try and see if he can form a formidable partnership for the long term with this man Xavier Slaga. But now though with things looking pretty rosy in terms of morale in the RB Leipzig camp courtesy of us having a seven point gap at the top of the table with just 17 games played it is now time to get back to the football and we're going to be kicking off this episode with some back to back games firstly starting off with a hard fought draw at home against Bayern Leverkusen and getting back in the win column courtesy of a very late 80 second minute goal by Yusuf Paulsen to give us a 2-1 away win against Stuttgart we knock Union Berlin out of the quarterfinals of the DFP Pokal beating them away from home 2-1 as well and we follow that up with back to back victories of them courtesy of Appender getting his second hat trick of the season as we beat them 3-1 this time at home and that result means since losing on the opening day of the season 1-0 to Bayern Leverkusen we have extended our unbeaten run all the way through to February of 2024 and those results have kept us top of the Bundesliga four points clear of second place Borussia Dortmund and into the semi-finals of the DFP Pokal where we're going to be facing off against our rivals Bayern Munich for now though it's time to see if we can continue this fine run of form as we take on a relegation threatened Augsburg away from home and we're going to kick off our opening played game of this episode with a couple of changes. Chevalier keeps his place in goal after displacing Wallachi. Henrik, Simakan, Lukeber and Raum start at the back. Schlager and Zivald start in midfield. Elmas, Danny Almo, Sesko and Appender are all my attacking players. So Danny Almo has it and he's uh, given the affordance to turn around and find a ball forward and Sesko now plays it back into Danny Almo. Out to Raum. Raum back into Danny Almo. Everything flowing through the Spaniards so far in this game as Appender picks it up and tries to bend it around the goalkeeper. Brilliant save here but warning signs early here for Augsburg in the first five minutes. Lukeva into Raum. All RB Leipzig so far in this game as Danny Almo is picking up really nice pockets of space and lays a wonderful ball out to Henriks who plays it to the back post looking for Sheshko who in the end was a bit of a way away from that one. It's Becker now for Augsburg into Meyer. This is their first foray into my half so far and they have unlocked my defence here. They've got an option in the box if they can find him. Vargas though is held up by Henriks who's had a really good game so far. Baku though still has the ball that kept the attack alive. Henriks does enough though to force him all the way out to the edge of their half. And now, though, they still have it, but Danny Almo intercepts. And now we can try and see once again if we can launch a counter-attack with Sheshko down the left-hand side. He's waiting, just waiting for some sort of support, but he doesn't seem to need it as he manages to bundle his way through here under a bit of pressure, wriggles away from a couple of challenges, plays it into Raum, Raum round the corner into Appender on his left. Absolutely brilliant build-up play. Appender somehow managed to keep himself on side, but it was all the hard work from Sheshko down the left to just bundle his way into the penalty area. Played it into Raum, and Raum with the deft assist right into the channel through the heart of the defence. And Appender took it nicely on his left, found the back of the net to continue this fabulous reign of form that he finds himself in. It's 1-0 RB Leipzig. Well, as we begin the second half here, it's pretty much all RB Leipzig in the first, aside from one very brief foray into my penalty area. But in the end, we only managed to get a 1-0 lead here so far, so we've got to make sure we can make that count and see if we can double that lead here in the second half, as Danny Armo has the chance to do so, but plays it against the defender. We got a corner. It's one that Raum is going to take. The man who got the assist in the first half is going to look to try and see if he can get a second here in the second, as Costello... Uh, Lukeva with a bit of a wild header looped it wide but uh, Simakan's going to pick this one up back into that man round turns it around the corner into Sievald who manages to burst to the edge of the box here Sievald cuts it back in looking for the head of uh, Elmas I believe it was but in the end Asberg get it clear it's Meyer now floated over to the right hand side looking for Baku does manage to find Baku but he's held up by Raum and once again we can try and see if we can go forward here Sheshko plays it down the left hand side into that man Raum who's been so influential so far in this game he's driven into the box cuts it back into a pender looking for another goal contribution between the two of them but unfortunately we were blocked off Meyer for Augsburg out to Baku and once again this is their first foray this time into a half in the second half and they're going to hope to try and see if they can do better than they did in the first they've got it still though on the right hand side Raum once again for me who's been the man of the match so far today with another crunching challenge he brings it away and now it's played into the channel into Yusuf Paulson on as a substitute can he use that extra energy and stamina to try and burst into the box he can looking for the cutback into a pender with his left strikes it against the defender again how many times so far in this game have they got must needed blocks in right inside their penalty area. Now they're going to try and see if they can hit us on the counter-attack. This time they do manage to go past Realm. Costello Lukeva though with the block. 
Now they've got a corner. And to be honest, in the end, that turned out to be the very last attack of the game. A game that wasn't exactly littered with quality, but there was one moment that came from that man, Lewis Appenda. A brilliant finish gave us a much-deserved 1-0 win at full-time. Well, not only do we keep winning, not only do we maintain our title charge, but it is another clean sheet for RB Leipzig. I had my doubts about this man, Peter Gualacci, in the first half of the season, so I decided to replace him with a younger model in Lucas Chavalier, the young Frenchman, and it's so far it is proving to be the right decision. Gualacci in 26 appearances only managed six clean sheets, and already in just five appearances, Chavalier has got two clean sheets to his name, a 7.1 rating in the Bundesliga, and he is helping turn us into a lean, mean defensive machine. However, speaking of defensive performance, I do have to give a shout out to this man, David Raum. I was 50-50 about trying to see if I could replace him, or at least improve him, in the January transfer window, and especially in the summer when I brought in this man, Hartman, to try and compete with him. It seems like it has raised his game. So far, he's got nine assists, seven of those coming in just 19 Bundesliga appearances. He's established himself as my number one left back, and with him being second on the assist sheet in the Bundesliga, it looks like he's turning himself into one of the best defenders in the entire league. However, after being underdogs in the Champions League and managing to oust Manchester City to top spot in our group stage, we have secured our path through to the round of 16, where we are going to be facing off against Inter Milan. And as ever in the first leg of our Champions League knockout ties, we are going to sim this game and we are going to find ourselves on the losing side of the first 90 minutes. Two goals from Laturo Martinez means Inter Milan take a 2-1 lead into the Red Bull Arena in the second leg and it means we put ourselves in a very difficult position and we've got it all to do. Before we do that though, with the likes of Borussia Dortmund and Bayern Munich beginning to breathe down our necks in the Bundesliga and of course we are going to be facing off once again for the third time this season against our arch rivals Bayern Munich. We're one win apiece. They beat us in the opening game in the German Super Cup. We got our revenge in the Bundesliga by beating them and we've got to hope to see if we can do the double this time around. However, that midweek Champions League game has meant that there is a little bit of fatigue that's crept into my squad so I have had to make a few changes. Chevalier keeps his place in goal. Dedic, Simakian, Klosterman and Raum come in at the back. Schlager's partnered by Sievald, Elmas and Danny Olmo start behind Yusuf Poulsen and Appender up front. Well, a big game here and once again it's another game that is potentially going to have huge ramifications to the title fight. If Bayern Munich get the three points here, they drag themselves right back into it. But if we can win, we can put some serious distance between ourselves and them. And maybe already we can put one hand on that Bundesliga title. But at the moment, it's going to be Kingsley Coman who's going to burst through my defence here. Almost past three players. Simakan does enough. And Denic just about manages to clear it off for a corner. Good piece of defending once again from the young Frenchman. But we've got to do it once again as they floated it into the box. Sieval with the header away. Musiala has it on the edge. Kimmich now for Munich. Twisting away. Trying to see if he can find some sort of option. But round the man at the moment wins it back. Play Plays it into a pender, and now the young man is going to try and see if he can, he can hold the ball up here. Plays it down the line, but in the end, Alfonso Davis wins it well. Now Dedic down the right-hand side, plays it into the path of a pender who's come deep. Sievald down the right-hand side into Elmas, and now he's got space to try and see if he can run into here. Elmas into the box, he's going to look for the cutback into Poulsen. What a brilliant block from De Ligt, and in the end, it was a big header from Danny Olmo. The man while Neuer just tipped over the bar. Well, we've got a corner here that Ram is going to float into the box here. Looking for the head of Klosterman, and Klosterman, my reserve centre-back, has come in in one of the biggest games of the season and absolutely sent the RB Leipzig fans into raptures with a bullet header from a wonderful round corner. The assist machine just keeps on giving. What a header from Klosterman. In for the fatigued Auburn and Luke Heber. And my word, he has proved it's worth it today. We take a 1-0 lead. Bayern Munich, though, are going to try and see if they can head us back immediately. Sane is going to try and float this one into the box. Headed away, though, once again by Sievald. It's the second time so far this game he's done that. Musiala picks it up. Kingsley Coman on the edge of the box. Drags it wide. Goes central into Sievald. Nicely done into Schlager, who's taken it really nicely. And now Danny Armo can feed in Yusuf Poulsen. Poulsen looking for the run of a pender. Can't quite find him, so goes himself and forces Manuel Neuer into a tough stop and in the end Sivar gets on the end of it but just took too heavy a touch and it goes out for a Bayern Munich goal kick. Koke for Munich. Elmas pressing him high. Exactly what I want my players to do here. Neuer has absolutely no choice but to just boot it forward. Simakan though aggressive in the air once again. Wins it back and now Elmas to bring it forward. Plays it into the path of a pender. Tried to play it round to the on-rushing Sival but just couldn't find him. And now Munich can try and see if they can burst forward. But Simakan once again. He's an absolute rock at the back for me. Winning it exactly what I needed him to. Pressing high and now pender has the opportunity to try and play it down the line into Dedic the right back. Frozen into the box, looking for Danny Almo, finds him, oh my word, what are Bayern Munich doing at the back, it's a complete and utter shambles, 
Danny Olmo was beaten to the ball, but they just didn't know how to clear it, and it just fell back to him, and from that distance, he is not going to miss from there. Well, it was a good ball in from Dedic, but what on earth was going on? It's Musiala, I believe, no, Mazarawi, sorry, who just chests it into the path of Danny Olmo, and on the six-yard box, just volleys it through the open legs of Manuel Neuer. I'm delighted, 2-0. Well, something just isn't quite right about Munich here today. They just haven't been functioning at their high level, and I'm going to hope to try and see if I can take advantage of it. It's a thrown back in, Klosterman. Almost looking for his second goal, but it just went slightly wide. We have managed to keep it alive, though. Into Xavier Schlager. He plays it into Seabald. Round the corner into Appenda. Appenda is going to look through. Lovely ball into Almas, who stayed on side. He's played it across to Delict. In the end, Delict just showing the strength to keep it off for him. And Schlager tried to play it forward in the end. It wasn't a particularly good ball. And that is a big opportunity that's gone begging. It's Sane now for Munich as they try and see if they can make a foray into my half here at the beginning of the second. Harry Kane, though, can't go past Simakan. Nothing can go past the French. Well, once again here, we've got another corner, 71 minutes on the clock, just under 20 minutes remaining to try and see if we can have a third, and it's thrown into Klosterman again. So many times he's had that opportunity, he couldn't take advantage though this time, in the end, blazed his header high and wide. Kimmich into Sane, Sane into Guerrero as uh, Bayern Munich throw so many men forward here, look at the press. But if we can beat the press, they're leaving so many spaces at the back here for us to try and take advantage of. Seabald into Poulsen, just couldn't get the right touch now. And Harry Kane is released up front, but he doesn't have any options. Instead goes out to the left-hand side to Napri. Back into Kimmich, back into Harry Kane, who strikes, puts it high and wide. Simakan all the way out to the right-hand side to Dedich. Nice little one-touch pass into Poulsen. Poulsen burst to the edge of the box here. Upamecano baits it out for a corner. Well, it actually wasn't a corner. As you can see, we've got a free kick here in a very dangerous position. Sheshko is the man who looks like he's going to be the one to take it but instead I'll try and see if I can make it into Hartman and try and see if I can make this one a bit of an in-swinger here the left back Hartman's going to try and see if he can float this one into the box chips it in it's a really poor ball and once again it's another opportunity here in the second half that goes begging and it's another opportunity now for Bayern Munich to try and see if they can hit us on the counter attack they've got men over here Guerrero out to the right hand side into Leroy Sane look at the pace easily accelerating away from Denich Hartman comes across to try and challenge not a good enough one Kane what a save from Chevalier once again my new goalkeeper proving his worth and speaking of goalkeepers Manuel Neuer is in the box throwing everyone forward at Bayern Munich here it's headed away by Hoyerman can Haidara get there first it does not matter because the referee blows for full Time. Well, Bayern Munich just did not seem to be at the races today, but I do not care one bit. I salute the travelling RB Leipzig fans and Klosterman celebrate. His goal gave us the early lead and that man, Danny Olmo, doubled it midway through the first half to help us on our way to a 2-0 victory at full time. It's a massive win in the context of our title fight. We've now cleared Bayern Munich by seven points level on the same games. But for me, the biggest talking point was yet again another clean sheet. Of course, the young Frenchman Chevalier will get the plaudits, but for me, that was all about the performance of this man, Sami Khan, an absolute unit at the heart of my defence. He has been nothing short of sensational all season, and I cannot believe he's only rated 81, because for me, he's one of the best defenders in the entire league. And I'm really hoping that will give us the confidence to try and right the wrong of what was a very poor performance in the first leg of the Champions League knockout stages. That's once again, we're going to be facing off against Inter Milan. And once again, due to a little bit of fatigue, I have had to make a couple of enforced changes. Chevalier, of course, keeps his place in goal. Henriks, Simakan, Lukeper and Raum starts at the back. Schlager, Hoyman in midfield. Elmas is partnered by Baumgartner in behind the strikers as Dani Almo drops to the bench. Sheshko and Appenda starts up front. Well, here we go then. An absolutely huge game. We lost 2-1 in the first leg. We've got to make sure in front of our own fans here we get the job done. Otherwise we will go crashing out of the Champions League after such a good start to the campaign. Into Laturo Martinez, it's Churam now trying to bustle his way forward past his French counterpart Simakan, but he's having absolutely none of it. But Churam picks it up again with Simakan slightly out of position. DeMarco, lovely pass into Laturo Martinez, the man who undid my defence twice in the first leg. And Chavalier with a big save, and in the end it fell to that man, and he didn't manage to take it. And somehow he put it wide and somehow the scores still remain at nil-nil. But Inter have got a corner. They're going to go short with the corner. They do. It's DeMarco. Throws it in. Headed away by who else but that man Simakan. Only out as far as Bastini. Hallman with a diving header away into Milan. All over us here in the opening 10 minutes. Williams, though, is challenged by Raum. And now Elmas can bring it forward. And Elmas has an option of Baumgartner down this left-hand side. Has he got the pace to get away from the defender? No, he doesn't. So instead plays it into Sheshko. Sheshko looks for the ball back. But Baumgartner's offside. Martinez, what a beautiful ball through into the path of Williams down the right side who plays it across 
to Boreo Henriks into Elmas. It's been a tough opening 25 minutes here against Inter Milan. We haven't really been able to carve out any decent opportunities, but now we've got a chance here as Henriks is going to try and bring this one forward into the pot of Hallman. Hallman plays it into a Penda on a break for him. And the young Belgian fires us into a 1-0 lead here in front of our own fans here at the Red Bull Arena. Brilliantly done, well worked. And the right back Henriks played it into Hallman who had the composure to pick out a Penda who once again continues his fabulous form so far this episode and the last episode as well was on hand just to hit it into the top left hand corner it's 1-0 Henrik's on the right hand side now plays it into Holmand I would like to get another goal here inside the 90 minutes so this doesn't have to go to extra time as Sheshko picks it up in a deep position plays it into Baumgartner Holman though has it again the man who laid it on a plate for Appender in the first goal plays it across though into Sheshko and it is that man who fires us into a 2-0 lead we have just turned this tie on its head within a blink of an eye what a brilliant start here in the opening 35 minutes well it was fabulous build up play yet again I thought the momentum of the attack was slightly gone but Baumgartner played it through the legs of the defenders fortunately it fell very kindly to that man Sheshko not to be outdone by a striking partner lashed it into the back of the net I'm delighted 2-0 well Inter Milan look absolutely shell-shocked they've gone from 2-1 up now to 3-2 down on aggregate and they have now got it all to do but Latura Martinez plays it out to DeMarco now he's going to go one-on-one -on -one with Simakan of course the big Frenchman in the right place at the right time to snuff out any danger Pareo though has it in a really dangerous position he's won it high and they're three on two here Lukeba the Frenchman comes across Javier Slide with a huge challenge so here we go then as we begin the start of this second half we've got 45 minutes to hold on to what will be a historic victory here in the round of 16 in the Champions League coming from behind can we perform a miracle hold on to this victory here and try and see if we can seal our path through to the next round Barella nice little reverse pass into Pareo and Pareo back into Barella a good start here from Inter Milan inside the opening 10 minutes can they try and see if they can work a nice little opportunity here as Williams into the box a little bit of mix up in my defence here Hallman's in the way DeMarco has an opportunity plays it back into Pareo Churam strikes what a brilliant save from my goalkeeper and beats it away into position that Henriks can get the ball clear Round now on the left hand side into Sheshko Sheshko fires it into Baumgartner really nicely done he tried to play it down the line into a pender in the end though Bastani read that one really well Sommer to bring it away hacks it clear for Inter Milan anywhere will do for their defenders it's Simakan though once again with a big aerial challenge wins the ball back into Sheshko a pender now into Baumgartner Baumgartner to give us our third it's his first of the game and my word have we secured our path through to the next round what a brilliant incisive counter attack it was one in the air by Simakan who else and laid on a plate for Baumgartner he still had a lot of work to do but he smashed it into the back of the net with his left foot to to give us a very comfortable 3-0 lead. 15 minutes remain on the clock here for Inter Milan to somehow try and see if they can find a way back into this game. But at the moment, our defence is holding firm as Henriks now has it on the right-hand side. Plays it into the path of Holmand. Holmand going to look for the reverse ball back into Henriks. Really nicely done. Plays it across. I was looking for Sheshko. Couldn't find him. In the end, oh, I almost found Palm Kartner, who was on hand to try and volley that one into the back of the net, but just couldn't reach it. Into Javier Schlager. Into Holman. We are running rings around this Inter Milan side here as Elmas into the box. Cuts it back into Holman, who smashes it into the bottom left-hand corner. It is 4-0, and RB Leipzig will be playing in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. We have completely undone this Inter Milan defence that have been an absolute shamble so far today. Elmas once again with the cutback and Holmand, who has been very, very good so far in this game with a drilled finish into the bottom left-hand corner. It's 4-0 RB Leipzig. Well, fortunately enough for me and fortunately enough for Inter Milan to put them out of their misery, that turned out to be the last attack of the game. The RB Leipzig fans got absolutely wild and rightly so. Inter Milan, after putting us under a lot of pressure in the opening 20-25 minutes, completely seemed to fall apart here as soon as we got our first goal. As a full-time here, it finishes 4-0, 5-2 on aggregate. It smiles all round as Hallman gets his first goal of the season, and we secure our path through to the quarter-finals of the Champions League, where we are going to be facing off against the Spanish giants Atletico Madrid. And with things also looking good in the Bundesliga, and also looking good in the DFB Pokal, I am supremely confident that this squad has got a great opportunity to win silverware in my first season as manager of RB Leipzig but that is that for the end of today's episode I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have thanks for watching I'll see you again next time